While one of the worst hurricanes in American history was raging on throughout the United States the last several days, Hurricane Helene, Kamala Harris decided, eh, we're going to give the middle finger to all of that and instead sit down and record an episode of Viral S*** podcast, Call Her Daddy, hosted by Alex Cooper. At a rally in Pennsylvania, mm-hmm. former President Trump recently told women, you will be protected and I will be your protector. What do you make of that? So he who, when he was president, hand-selected three members of the United States Supreme Court with the intention that they would undo the protections of Roe v. Wade. And they did just as he intended. And there are now 20 states with Trump abortion bans, including bans that make no exception for for incest. Which Not true. Fact check number one. There is not a single situation with any Trump abortion ban. First of all, none of these are related to President Donald Trump. They are state legislatures that are passing these bills. There are at least exceptions for life of the mother in every single state where these supposed Trump abortion bans exist, but almost every single state includes exceptions for rape and incest, including the state of Florida where I live right now. We just discussed, which means that You're telling a survivor of a crime of a violation to their body they don't have a right to make a decision about what happens to their body next, which is immoral. So this is the same guy that is now saying that? This is the same guy who said that women should be punished for having abortions? Nope. Fact check number two. Not once ever has any mainstream Republican nor Donald Trump ever suggested that women should be punished criminally or locked up in prison for obtaining an abortion. Project 2025 doesn't even say that women should be locked up in prison for seeking out and obtaining an abortion. That is a completely fabricated lie made up by individuals like Kamala Harris to scare women, assuming you are that stupid and you're just going to believe everything that they tell you because we know best for you. We know it's just so hard to be a woman today and you're so stupid and you can't do your own research. This is so disgusting to me. This is the same guy who uses the kind of language he does to describe women. So, yeah, there you go. I do want to focus on abortion for a moment because two years ago, Roe v. Wade was overturned and women Mm -hmm. lost their constitutional right to an abortion. I put there was never fact check number three, a constitutional right to an abortion in the United States of America. Point to me in the Constitution where this constitutional right to an abortion is. They genuinely think you are this dumb and this gullible. That you can't just read the Constitution for yourself. There might theoretically in the future be a constitutional right to an abortion, but that does not exist under constitutional law in the United States today. I had an episode about it. I flew to North Carolina. Yeah. I went to a preferred women's health center. I met with women that mm-hmm. were getting screamed at and chanted at and called baby killers. And it was the most eye-opening experience I've yeah. ever had because I am a privileged white woman that lives in Los Angeles. And I am so aware of that. Um, I understand that a lot of the younger generation sees things online Mm -hmm. and is like, what is right? What is wrong? What is real? What is not? Can you explain and talk about what is actually happening to abortion access right now in this country? I am excited to see where this goes because I guarantee you everything that's about to come out of Kamala's mouth is a lie. So again, I thank you for what you've been doing at the earliest stage of this and following the stories. So, you know, on public policy, I often tell my team, look, I don't want to hear about public policy is a fancy kind of speech or, or, or paper. Tell me how it'll affect a real person. So let's talk about how it affects a real person. The majority of women who receive abortion care are mothers. So if she's in a state, I'm sorry, what does that even mean? The majority of women who receive abortion care are mothers. Every single woman obtaining an abortion is a mother. By definition, she's carrying a child. I'm so confused. Is this supposed to be like a gender? Like, what? 
and by the way, every state in the South, except for Virginia, has an abortion ban. Okay? With exceptions. Um, so imagine she's in a state with an abortion ban. One out of three women are, by the way, in our country. And she's a mom. So she's going to have to figure out, one, God help her if she has affordable child care. God help her if she has paid leave. And then she's going to have to go to the airport, stand in a TSA line, sit on a plane next to a perfect stranger to go to a city where she's never been to receive the care she needs. She's going to probably have to get right back on that plane because she's got those kids. Her best friend's probably not with her because that's who's taking care of the kids. What is this hypothetical situation? What I'm mm. to get back in that TSA line to get back on a plane to go home, and that's all if they can even afford exactly. the plane exactly or the bus ticket. exactly exactly. Because when Roe v. Wade was overturned, I remember my DMs were flooded with yeah. thousands of women. Mm -hmm. begging me to help and yeah. it's overwhelming and mm -hmm. I can't even imagine I'm saying that in front of you but it's it's overwhelming and I remember people begging me like I just need to afford a bus ticket so I can yeah. get out of this abortion desert yeah. that I live in in the south so I can get to a state but they can't even afford you know what I mean so it's like it's these people awful. are literally landlocked into a position that they don't want to be and and here's the thing here's the thing is that you don't have to abandon your faith or deeply held beliefs to agree. The government shouldn't be telling her what to do. If she chooses, she'll talk to her priest, her pastor, her rabbi, her imam, but not the government telling you what to do. And that's what's so outrageous about it is a bunch of these guys up in these state capitals are writing these decisions because they somehow have decided that they're in a better position to tell you what's in your best interest than you are to know what's in your own best interest. It's outrageous. It's outrageous. I mean, daddy gang, to put it in um, our TikTok terms, um, I have seen girls on the street walk up to men and be like, do you know where a tampon goes? Right. Do you know how many tampons we use? Do you even know how, like, do you know what a X or Y or Z is of a part of our, and they don't know the answer. I was the first vice president or president to ever in office uh, go to a, a reproductive health care clinic ever really yes yes i'm yes I'm i have so much to unpack here there is so much to unpack here a it apparently is not abandoning your faith to be pro-abortion it it is though it is quite literally abandoning your faith to be pro-abortion but i i do find it interesting that Kamala Harris seems to be planting this seed of limited governance of like trying to get the government out of your life and stop heavily regulating your decisions. That's how she's packaging this. If you need to wrestle with the decision to get an abortion, you can talk to your priest, you can talk to your rabbi, but you don't need to talk to the government because they have no business here. Her entire career has been built on making the government have more and more and more business over your life. And yet the men are making the decisions and, about and our here's, And here's the other thing about this point, it, that it, it's about IVF treatments and access. No, it's not. It's about access to contraception, which is no, very much not. at risk with these folks. Um, it is about, back to the point about reproductive health clinics. You know what those clinics also do? They do PAPs. They do breast cancer screenings. They do HIV testing. And actually they do don't believe it or not. Planned Parenthood's own numbers have shown that 97% of the services that they provide are abortion. That's it. So they're not really providing HIV screenings or pap smears or breast exams or certainly maternal care. They are an abortion provider. And please, Kamala Harris, point to me one example, one example of a singular piece of legislation anywhere in this country where people are actually seeking to ban IVF or ban contraception. And you know what? Maybe we should because birth control, particularly birth control pills, are literally just slow release poison. We talk about this all the time on the show. 
literally just poisoning entire generations of women and we're gaslighting them into thinking that's empowering. So maybe we should have a conversation about what types of contraception should be available over the counter in America. But seriously, no, it's not. The fear mongering is out of control. And I cannot recommend if you guys haven't already made prayer a part of your daily routine, downloading the world's largest Christian prayer app, Hallo, H-A-L-L-O-W. They have more than 10,000 original prayers, meditations, history podcasts, lifestyle podcasts, mental health resources, everything you can possibly imagine that has totally transformed my prayer life and that of almost every single one of you as well. Hallow is offering you a three-month free trial to all of the incredible content on their platform. If you go right now to hallow.com slash Isabel, H-A-L-L-O-W dot com slash Isabel. And our friends over at Public Square, America's largest leading marketplace for small businesses that are all pro-family, pro-faith, and pro-freedom and pro-actual science, by the way, actually got their start out in the beautiful state of California. They are changing how we spend money in America one day at a time, realizing that where we spend our dollars is where culture is going to thrive. If you are looking for businesses to support that share your values, check them out at publicsquare.com. And if you are a business owner of any kind, make sure you add your small business to Public Square to connect with customers who share your values too. I'm so glad by the way, that there are companies that are trying to get to the actual truth of matters like this and in standing for women in general, just one of which happens to be my amazing friends over at Garnu. Garnu is the only period product company on the market that insists only women can menstruate. Thank you for that, by the way, Garnu, because we need a whole lot more of that. And their pads, their tampons, and their menstrual cup products are all 100% organic and completely non-toxic. I have noticed a huge change in my cycle since switching to Garnu products, and I cannot begin to recommend them enough to you, especially after we just found out that most leading tampon brands have arsenic and lead in them if you're buying them at Target or the grocery store. You can get a discount on your first order to Garnier if you click the link in the description of this video. And please, please, please embrace the same courage that they are in standing up for real womanhood in 2024 and beyond.